Hi. The most important results that you will encounter during this course rely on linearly independent vectors. Before I give you the definition, I want to show you some examples to illustrate what linear independence means. Let's start by taking a look at these three vectors, u1, u2 and u3. Here you see the same vectors drawn in R3. The span of these vectors is the entire three-dimensional space. This means that each vector can be written as a linear combination of u1, u2 and u3. Now, is this always the case? Is the span of three vectors always the entire space? Of course it is not. The following vectors, v1, v2 and v3, are an example. Maybe it's not immediately clear what the span of these vectors is, if you look at the coordinates. But the following figure might give you an idea. Chances are that you have guessed by now that the span of v1 and v2 and v3 is in fact a plane, and this is correct. The span of these three vectors is a plane through the origin. So what is the difference between these examples? Why is the span the entire space R3 in the first example, and do we only get a plane in the second one? Here you see the vectors v1 and v2 from the second example. The vectors v1 and v2 together span a plane. Now let's add the vector v3 to the picture. You may have already noticed that v3 lies in the plane defined by v2 and v1. This means that if we take the span of v1 and v2, we actually just get the span of v1 and v2. Adding the vector v3 doesn't really make the span any larger. How could we have seen that v3 lies in the plane defined by v1 and v2 by just looking at the coordinates? To be an element of the plane spanned by v1 and v2, the vector v3 must be equal to a linear combination of these vectors. Now, with a little bit of calculation, you can see that this is indeed the case. In particular, the vector v3 is equal to 2 times v1 plus v2. Now, this is exactly what we mean by linear dependence. A collection of vectors is called linearly dependent if one of the vectors can be written as a linear combination of the others. Here is another example of a collection of three linearly dependent vectors. This example is a little different from the previous one. The vector v3 cannot be written as a linear combination of v1 and v2. Take a few seconds to figure out why. Still, these vectors are lin linearly dependent. The definition of linear dependency only said that one of the vectors had to be a linear combination of the others. You can see that the second vector is a multiple of the first one, namely v2 equals minus 3 times v1. So v2 is equal to a linear combination of the other vectors, which means that they are linearly dependent. Now let's go back to the example that we started with, the three vectors u1, u2 and u3. Suppose you have to determine whether these vectors are linearly dependent. Following the definition, we have to check if one of these vectors can be written as a linear combination of the others. Now let's start with u3. Here it is easy to see that u3 can never be a linear combination of the first vectors. Since the third coordinate of both u1 and u2 is zero, any linear combination of those vectors will have a third coordinate that is equal to zero. And that's a problem, because the third coordinate of u3 is equal to 3. The same holds for u1 and u2. Neither of them are linear combinations of the other two. Look at the system of equations on the left. If the second coordinate of the right-hand side needs to be 1, then x must be equal to 1. Because the third coordinate must be 0, we know that y must be equal to 0. But then the first coordinate on the right-hand side would be equal to 1 and not 0. You can figure out why the system of equations on the right-hand side also does not have a solution. So neither of these vectors is a linear combination of the others. This means that they are not linearly dependent. Now, such a set of vectors will be called linearly independent. Here you see five vectors in R3. Now, by now you may think that it will be quite a lot of work to check if these vectors are linearly independent. Figuring out for each vector if it can't be written as a combination of the others, that will take a lot of time. Now, this is why in class we will come up with a more efficient way to check linear dependency of vectors. And this will be explained in detail during your next lecture. That's all for now. Hope to see you in class.